Why are so many Asian Americans trying to move to Thailand right now? Maybe one of us might be. Let's talk about it. Hey man, let's run the clips. I'm the most happiest and at peace that I've ever been here in Thailand. Something about this environment, it just radiates positivity. These are so good. I think the biggest thing I gained from living here in Bangkok for the past three years is being content and realizing I don't actually need much to live a happy, simple lifestyle. I live in a one bedroom apartment that is 650 square feet. I pay 20,000 Thai baht, which is around 550 USD a month. I'm actually located right in Tong Lao, Bangkok, which is kind of like this chic, kind of fashionable area. Some people would consider it like the Soho of Bangkok. For Wi-Fi, I pay around $20 a month for 500 megabytes per second. For electricity, I pay around $80 a month. And for water, I pay around $3 a month. I am the biggest idiot ever. I totally miss this. Washing machine is over here, right in the kitchen. All right, Sophia, the moment of truth. Can you remind us how many square meters this unit is? And most importantly, what everybody wants to know, how much is it going to cost? Okay, this is a one bedroom unit on level 51, 35 square meter. Before COVID, the rent was at 35,000 baht, but right now we have COVID discount, 20,000 baht for at least one year contract. Boom, listen, if you've been on the internet in the Asian American, Asian Asian space for the past six months, last past year, I know you've seen one of these viral videos. Live in a luxury sky rise condo in Bangkok for $500 a month. Yeah, I mean, and I would say it's not just Asians who are making these videos. A lot of people are moving to Thailand, but I feel like it's for different reasons than it used to be which, you know, people would assume that, oh, you want to move to Thailand, it's for debaucherous reasons for some reason. Are you talking about the fat, bald, white guy with the Hawaiian shirt? That is one of the archetypes. But I think nowadays with Asian Americans, it's for different reasons, David. So we're going to break this down for everybody. So please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Because who knows? Maybe... We'll go to Thailand. Well, actually, I'm going to be in Bangkok all of November and all of December. So hit me up on Instagram if you guys are plugged up out there. David's moving there for two months. Um, by the way, guys, check out Smala Sauce on Amazon.com right now. Um, here is just a few of the Asian American creators, Andrew. They're all from America, raised in America or Canada, and that have relocated permanently to Bangkok, Thailand. Is it permanent, permanent, forever, forever? It's for the time being. Right, right, right. It's like just a moment right now, I guess. And we want to go over it. Um, This is from the Thailand subreddit. Why are lots of people moving to Thailand? And this person came through with a specifically Asian American perspective, basically saying like, I just needed a break. I I'm moving there for the same reasons that everybody else is. But just like I wanted outside of the way that that I wanted out of the Asian American situation. Mm, let's be for more, spe more specific about how Asian Americans are treated here. Maybe, maybe he's getting a little tired of it. Maybe right. he felt like he's not getting what he should deserve. I'm right, assuming. right, right. He was saying like maybe uh, on the top end, Asian Americans are capped, and on the bottom end, there's a lot of street stuff where obviously Asian Americans usually on the receiving end of negative impacts in the streets. Right, and honestly, as a guy who, I think he's about 31 years old, he's probably worked a job, he's saved some up, maybe he has a job that he can work from home, he's flexible, he's probably single, doesn't have a family of his own, so he is in a perfect position to move across the world. Yeah, listen, anytime you have a gigantic family, that completely changes your situation and calculus. Right, so anyway. let's get into the 10 reasons why a lot of Asian American particularly guys, but I think Asian American women too, but mostly Asian American guys, why they're moving to Thailand. Right, point number one, Andrew, it's very affordable and cheap. So basically, depending on what country you come from, you will like have a lot more purchasing power mm. in terms of purchasing things like rent, food, those are way cheaper. Obviously, it is more expensive if you wanna like drive a Porsche around, but that's always how foreign brands are. Cars are always like more expensive overseas. Right, and I would say the thing about Bangkok, I visited one time and it's like, it has everything a big city has. But your your USD, your dollar is going to go so much further there. It's like, I'm not going to say it has a th all the things that New York has because it's a different country and different culture. But it has like, man, you want shopping. You want nightlife. You want uh, health care. You want food. You want social uh, interactions. You want a social life. 
Thailand is there. Right. Like whatever your solid core you, hot yoga club is, they have that there too. And it's safe. That's another big thing is that in a lot of big cities, it's not as safe usually, but it's fairly safe in Bangkok. Right. Um, I do think, by the way, these could apply to anybody, but they apply to Asian Americans as well. The uh, global economy is seeing major inflation in first world countries. So for the longest time, everybody wanted to be in a first world country. That's why a lot of our parents like immigrated from Asia, right? But Right now in first world countries, things, especially like housing, are getting incredibly expensive. Mm, so if people want to escape it and go to a place that honestly is more seeing their economic boom, sort of like Vietnam or Laos, you know, but maybe Vietnam and Laos, you know, they don't have the systems and all the accommodations yeah. that Thailand has. I want to say that Thailand may be even further along its arc. Yeah, and I, I, we can't overlook the fact that there is a lot of, Chinese money or Asia money going into Thailand over the past few years. Not just China, but I think other Japan, Korea also, uh, they have more businesses in well, Indonesia. There, there, and there's Thailand a lot of people from, from Asia that are moving there. Right, right. Yeah, not just Asian Americans. Like, like even people from like Mongolia, they want to get out of the cold. Um, but for a lot of people, they're also moving. And for like white Americans, we know some people who moved to like Puerto Rico or Costa Rica. Right. But that was, uh, I feel like largely for tax reasons or their expat community. But it's like, but a, it's like, it could be for a similar reason because you're like closer to the West. Right, 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 right. Uh, point number two, the economic development is still there. Like you said, in Southeast Asia, it's really like far along. It's ARC, and there's uh, apps like Grab, Food Panda. They've all been popular since 2020. So basically, if you're accustomed to the Western lifestyle of like ordering things off apps and Ubers and things like that, they have that infrastructure set up there as well. Um, point number three, Andrew, Thai food and culture. Sawadee Kab. Um, tell them, do you, did you like the food when you no, went? No, the food is great. I mean, dude, Thai food is trending almost in every country that it's introduced in. Like, I don't even know of a single country. It's getting more popular in the UK. It's super popular in America, all cities in America, and especially the big cities. And I think Thai cuisine is just, people just love it, man. And Thai people, they do a great job. They're super hospitable. They know how to do restaurants. They know how to treat people right. They do have good service. So honestly, Thai food is just, dude, if you want cheap food and it's still good and like, I'm not going to say that if you eat all the street food in Thailand that you're not going to get like, you know, some upset stomach or some l diarrhea, but I'm saying you're going to get like, that's just eating street food in general. Yeah. I the mean, street food is really good too there. Look, Chad GPT said that Thai food is often considered a top 10 food in the world. When you rank the cuisines into about 75 different major regions, Thai food is often in the top 10. Bro, top 10, considering how many Thai restaurants there are in America per Thai person, I would have to say Thai food is the most popular considering their population. Thai food, yes, you're right. Given the population of Thais in America is the most popular Asian food in America. It's the most popular it's the most food. Over, yeah, it's the most overrepresented. It's the most overrepresented food period in America considering the population in America. Right, Thai culture as well. People said the, the land of smiles, they're very warm. There is a Buddhist undertone to everything like that. Mm. And if you guys know about Buddhism, that is a very peaceful, harmonious religion in even comparison to other ones. Point number four, American culture is pretty ubiquitous. Yeah, well, if you go over there, I mean, you're gonna not only run into some expats, uh, hopefully some good-hearted expats, but also like, just, I mean, American culture, Western culture is is still prevalent out there. Uh, did you know a top three selling car in Thailand is the Ford Ranger? Oh, yeah. Which is a gigantic truck. David, do you know how many durians a Ford Ranger can carry? Right, right, right. T the Toyota Hilux is up there, too, that uh, crazy little bug minivan. Uh, but, yeah, people were raving about all the Thai McDonald's and Thai KFC menu items. Man, they, they look so good. Yo, they got the chicken cone. Cheesy chicken. Um, I'll try. I'm going to try it. Point number five. But you, while there are American products and uh, first tier country amenities, you're also outside of the American cultural sphere. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I, I think you're going to see and we can all agree that obviously like if you're a tall white American or tall white British person and rich in in thailand or wherever you go you're still going to get treated nice but ultimately you're still outside of the power of control of the west so you're not really going to have to ab abide by or suffer from certain dynamics 
You know what right. I mean? In Thailand of like being like, oh, I'm like the Asian dude. I'm the only Asian dude. I'm the short Asian dude at my company or whatever it is. Or uh, the dating scene isn't great for me or whatever. It's just like you're outside of the... Well, you're, well, you're the, outside of the Anglosphere, to be Anglo-sphere, honest. Because right. Thailand actually is a country that's never been colonized. Right. Which is very interesting because a lot of Southeast Asia was colonized by either the French or the Dutch at some point. Right. Um, yeah, but it's outside of all the Western cultural wars. Some people call them identity wars, whatever is going on in the West right now. Whether people think that those are real or imagined or exaggerated. They're certainly, those fires seem to be raging on right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, point number six, it's no longer just cheap debauchery for Westerners anymore. Now, I was reading that there's a lot of more high net worth, super skilled or like internationally tiered skilled individuals that are moving there. Yeah, and I think that's good. I think it's good for the culture. I think that's good for the local people too. You know, it's not just like having a bunch of people flashing their cash trying to just uh, date as many women as they want and not care about what's happening or whatever. I want to buy that. I want to buy yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that the caliber of person that is coming to thailand and we already know some friends and obviously the youtubers the asian youtubers shout out to paul lee and forrest lee right and the many many others who are spending time in thailand it's like they're like they had good jobs like they're not losers back home these are people who well, they were successful these are people who were successful but just choosing a different life right now. Right, right, right. Um, they also have like a new visa thing. So it's like they're changing some of the rules to get more like high net worth, like highly skilled expats rather than like some wild Aussies or, you know, some rambunctious Russians. Uh, number seven, they are escaping things that are happening in their homeland. Uh, so some people are saying that people are escaping serious things like war or like conscript conscription in a war because there's wars going on across the globe constantly but maybe more right now than there used to be in the past decade or so um people are sick of identity-based bickering it seems like that's a big thing mm. right now and like almost any anglospheric country is just like a lot of arguing over identity right and um yeah but even people from asia are escaping some of the sort of controlled lives that they have because andrew anywhere in east asia if you smoke weed you are in really big trouble. Right. Anywhere in East Asia. I don't care where it is. Guess where it is quasi-legal? Thailand. And it's the only country and actually all of Asia, including Southeast Asia, where smoking weed is basically like... Right, there are still rules. I, I, you're not supposed to smoke out in public, but you can buy it and sell it or whatever it's like that. Right, right, right. Point number eight. Thai people are really nice and polite. Guys, I just feel like if you just want to say hi to people and bow to people... Like, all right, first of all, you can go and bow to people in Japan, but Japan's more expensive. And it's also like a more like silent bow. But like, if you like to say hi and bow and, you know, hit them with the the, the Buddhist, like, you know, blessing hands or, or you know, and there's a million different cultures that it's called. But like, that's cool. You could do that in Thailand all the time. Just like, right, kap kum kap, kap kum kap. and then you just say thank you. And it's just like, it's just nice. People are just nice. They're just trying to say hi and smile. Yeah, for sure. The warmth. And it's a, or get, it's a real warmth, right? It's not a warmth designed to put you at ease so they can like scam you or something like yeah, that. Yeah, man. It's you a, gotta the, shout out to the Buddhism out there. Shout out to the real warmth, man, of, of Thailand. Number nine, there's a lot of diversity in a city like Bangkok. And Thai people are very open-minded. So, for example, Andrew, there's a mini Japan town in a district called Tonglor called Nihon Mura. So, mm. it's almost like that's just like chains from Japan. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's like a mini Japan town within Bangkok. So it basically goes to show you that Bangkok is like very Pan-Asian actually in some ways. Yeah, Bangkok's very international. Very, very international. And also, I mean, as we can see, right, David, there's a lot of Asian Americans that are there. So there's that growing scene. and Or, or Thai people that spent a heavy volume of time abroad or in right. Singapore or in like West, you know, Singapore. Listen, in the past 10 years, how many Thai international students have you met or Thai immigrants who moved here, worked and went back or Six months here. in, six months out. Yeah, there's a lot more. Right, right, right. And by the way, this is like Southeast Asia is booming in general, but like, you know, there's places like Bali and like, you know what I mean? Like there's a different balance everywhere. Some people say like Phuket is like too many tourists or too many right. foreigners. It just depends. On Some people say Bali is kind of like this uh, vacation place that's kind of overran by foreigners now. Right. Uh, in the past, like, five, ten years. And by the way, some of the same things I'm saying happen in Bangkok is happening to Jakarta. I noticed that they're getting a lot more, like, international people moving to Jakarta as well. High school in Jakarta. What is it called? Modern day Sparta. I don't know. Anyway, shout That's out to Nikki. a good song. Number ten. Uh, there are some more westernized 
aspects of Thai culture that are a little bit rare for Asia. For example, live performance. Obviously, we already talked about the deregulation of marijuana. Mm -hmm. That's like, you know, for Asia, that's considered like revolutionary. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I hope they handle it correctly. But like, I mean, I would just say the healthcare is very impressive out there from what I've seen. Um, and like the amount of gyms and like, it's cool that the hotels have or like the motels or the condominiums or whatever you can rent, they have like all the same gym equipment as America. Like, I think that's so cool because like when you go to Europe, as I've been to Italy and France, they don't got gyms in those hotels. Those are old buildings. Obviously they're beautiful architecture from the right. 1600s or whatever, but I'm saying there's not, those elevators are tiny and there is nothing modern in those hotels. Well, I think the thing is like Europe, they have had infrastructure for so long and then part of their selling point of tourism to Europe is heritage, but that sort of prevents them from getting hyper-modern. Right. Whereas if you look at Thailand, it's just getting like modern Western infrastructure more recently, so they get like the most updated version of yeah. it. Uh, point number 11, Dave, I don't think we got to talk about the social life. I mean, that's why maybe a lot of Asian guys would move to Thailand, right? Right. Well, Asian American guys specifically. Right. But yeah, I mean, anybody. Yeah. But because of all these things that we said, it's like, you know, maybe you you feel like just is an Asian guy. Like, I'm I'm not saying like whether you're dating a lot in Thailand or, or whatever you choose to do. It's like, you're just going to go there and feel like you are like a regular person that you're not being looked at as the singular Asian guy or like you're weird for being in yeah. this bar because you're Asian and like there's no but other Asians I, here. I'm not saying that every Asian American guy goes through this. I would say a lot would say at some point in their life they feel it, but it's like weird because like I would say in the West, the perception of Asian American guys is like we are like the mouses and everybody else is like, a, you know, like a larger animal and a mouse is supposed to cower in fear of a larger animal trying to the mouse is supposed to like hop yeah away the mouse away. is supposed to hop away even though the mouse is like really smart and good at stuff anyway let's get into the reactions from locals somebody said so these are thai locals yeah, mostly. yeah this, this guy said it depends on their true purpose i don't mind foreigners coming here for peaceful or retirement same thing for booming health care but i just don't ha like the foreigners who come here to conduct illegal business or subvert the local population or just basically not respect the system oh my gosh conduct illegal business and subvert the locals that say they sound like criminals you do not want criminals in your country or you don't want foreigners who are even uh abusing their let's just say western passport or privilege or whatever. in order to pull strings and really you know uh overstep what they should be doing well from what i've heard there there have been some issues with that in the past and obviously it depends on the infrastructure of the government or the system's like ability to address those concerns. right and like, i think that's why it's good to have like healthy positive like groups of expat guys who are there checking each other and like keeping each other accountable because i feel like you know i don't want to say it's all one type of person but i would assume that the asian american guys who move there they're generally pretty respectful yeah because i think they're more fitting in with the local ties than a complete foreigner. To yeah, be it's honest. almost like I'm sure they have more. Maybe yeah. speak. No, it's almost time, like you're right? like a second cousin that's coming to live with the family, or you're a first cousin that's coming to live with the family. It's like you're kind of familiar, and you're already part part of the culture, even if you're not of a Thai background. Right. Um. Somebody said there are very few places with a summer year round. They look stunning and safe and affordable. Yeah. So obviously, you don't want to cross political lines. Road safety is a little bit of an issue. Some I heard with the motorbikes. But overall, All right, so watch out for motorbikes. Yeah, but I heard overall there are very little racial or religious problems, which is quite rare mm. for a developing country. Because wow. a lot of times those, you know, there's race wars, religious wars, et cetera. And then uh, somebody just said, man, ultimately Thailand has a great balance of everything you would need. It might not be 10 out of 10 at everything, but the overall combined score just beats a ton of countries. And then they went on to say, China's too oppressive, Japan's too expensive, Cambodia's too poor, Malaysia has high crime rates, and Singapore is just too tiny. Funny. The Goldilocks pick. I guess that leaves Korea, though. I guess I guess Korea's probably somewhere in between, like, Japan and, like, Taiwan, I guess. Yeah, I think if you're not Korean, going to Korea Yeah, that's true. Korea, yeah, 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 that's true. Um, ultimately, man, I'm really excited. Uh, I've actually never been to Thailand. I've never been to Bangkok. I have been to Southeast Asia. Well, you're going to enjoy all the crab yeah. curry. The, the prong, prong noodle. I don't know. Yeah, there's just a lot of dishes out there. I would say the thing that I'm most excited to eat that I don't get a chance to eat is the, uh, they have this like hot pot 
slash barbecue mm. where it's like hot pot on the rim and then barbecue in the middle or hot pot in the middle and then barbecue on the rim. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the name. I forgot. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking for, uh, forward to checking it out. Uh, check out you guys. Let me know if you know anybody who's like spending a lot more time in Thailand or in Bangkok or they're just visiting or they're thinking about moving there. Uh, leave your email for the newsletter down below if you're uh, interested in getting on, on this Asian project that I'm working on and hit me up on Instagram if you are out in Thailand, out in Bangkok because I'm going to be there all November and all December. Woo! All right, everybody. Uh, let oh, us know. real quick. I got to say, we do have a friend, Andrew. He was in investment banking in New York, moved to work in iBanking in Hong Kong, and then left the iBanking industry completely and invest, is investing in small businesses in Bangkok. Wow. So it goes to show you, it's not just like, you're not just there for like, you know, which is all good. You're there, yeah. Yeah. You're not just there for debaucherous fun, cheap fun, and then you're in and out. Yeah. You're actually like, those are people that are investing and adding to the culture. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. And this is about New York or any type of pr transplant that's coming to a city that has a very strong, a pre-existing culture. You want to add to the city somehow. Yes, you're going to add your dollars. Yes, you're going to have fun, but you want to add to the city's fabric. You want to add to that country's fabric. You don't want to disobey. You don't want to, yeah, you don't have to assimilate 100%, but you want to add to it. You know what I mean? For sure, for sure. I mean, as is anywhere in life, but like, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think when you add to the fabric of something, it's going to give you all that right back. All right, everybody, let us know. Would you spend time in Thailand? Are you planning on it? Let us know in the comments down below. Uh, and until next time, we out. Peace. Peace. Hit me up.